Markham treated about a kilometer and a half of Coburg or of uh, Cornell's laneways with a limestone chip top coat. The result was a tough, sharp surface that cut tires and made it dangerous for the local kids to use the laneways for road hockey, rollerblading, skateboarding, and basketball. I chaired a ratepayers committee that successfully negotiated an acceptable solution with the town of Markham. The top coat was stripped off and the laneways were repaved. There was a park across the street from our former residence in Cornell and for about 10 years I recruited and organized a volunteer group of about 20 people to build and maintain two natural ice rinks in the park. The main rink was almost the size of the Rotary Park rink here in Coburg. In Coburg, I volunteer with, uh, the local, uh, with local radio, FM 89.7. I've made a number of delegations to this council on topics such as the travel lift, the marina, NMAI, and CIVI. Most, if not all of you, have received commentary and financial analysis from me by email on various topics such as the CCC, skateboard park, and the budget. I graduated from the U of T with a Bachelor of Science degree and after postgraduate studies in business, articled with Pete Marwick Mitchell, which is now known as KPGM, KPMG, and earned a Chartered Accountant's uh, designation. <laughs> after a few years, I joined the controller's office uh, in a large data processing company and held several management positions, including project manager and manager of revenue accounting. Following that, I was the financial controller for a variety of manufacturing firms. I have also sold high-end software systems, accounting software systems, and worked as a financial um, software consultant and software implementation specialist. As a member of the Unionville Toastmasters Club in Markham, I completed the Competent Toastmasters and Competent Leadership Program. I'm certainly uh, out of practice, and you can no doubt, tell, no doubt tell that, but a bit of practice will bring, will correct that. Through all of this, I have developed, uh, I have a well-developed business skill set, particularly in accounting, financial analysis, and solution development. I have written and evaluated numerous proposals and business cases. I know how to differentiate between needs and wants. From practical hands-on experience, I know how to make hard decisions. I am independent and beholden to no one. I am retired and in good health, and so I fully expect to be able to fulfill the uh, remaining term of this office. If counselors were paid 15 bucks an hour, this job would equate to about 20 bucks, 20 hours a week. However, I know that counselors, including former counselor Rickerby, will tell you that is much more demanding than that. 30, 40, and more hours per, me per week is probably <coughs> closer to the truth. Sometimes comments were made about Larry Sherwin missing council meetings due to his employment requirements. Unfair commentary, perhaps, but unfortunately true. Being retired, I can attend a council business without restrictions or conflicts from a day job or from the concerns of running a business. I'm acutely aware of the challenges facing Coburg, loss of industry, vacant storefronts, changing demographics and expectations, fear of loss of municipal services, a decade or more of wage stagnation, and a concern for the ability to pay. In summary, I believe that I have the interest, ability, and time to do this job very well. I ask that you give me the opportunity. Thank you for your attention.
Worship, the next candidate is Donald Owen. I think you know the process by now, Don. You can hand out your hard copies and Mr. Larmer will give you the signal. Just let me adjust the mic down a little bit here. Good evening, uh, Mayor Brockenair, Deputy Mayor Henderson, Councillors. Thank you for providing us this opportunity to serve our community. My name is Don Owen. I've lived in Coburg for 21 years, owned and operated the Oasis Bar and Grill for 23 years until I sold it in July of 2015. Carol, my wife, and I owned 31 King Street, the building that housed the restaurant from September 1995 through July of 2016. Most of you already know this, so let me tell you some things about me that I feel are relevant and that you might not know. Prior to our move to Coburg in the late, uh, in, to Coburg, in the late 80s, Carol's father was diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. We knew very little about the disease except that it had taken the life of Lou Gehrig. We soon found out how devastating it was and joined the ALS Society of Metro Toronto as board members and went about selling corn flowers in malls and giving out information packets create awareness. It was there I met a man who had absolutely no affiliation with ALS but showed a great interest in what we were doing and offered to help us raise much, much more money. His name was Maury Eckler and he helped us establish a regular bingo in Brampton. He had been involved in the famous Kingsway Bingo Hall in Toronto and knew all the processes. Maury taught us that it's easy for people to open their wallets and give cash or write a check but to give their time was much more valuable. During that time, we organized and ran weekly bingos in Brampton and several ALS music festivals at a restaurant I worked and played music at called Jake's Boathouse. Over a few years, we raised thousands of dollars while spreading the word of the disease. We purchased the Oasis in 1992. Owning a business in a small town allowed us to get involved in the community and the opportunity to give back while getting to meet and know our customers. Our very first customer was Bill Patchett who we got to know as a great businessman, citizen, and the most professional fundraiser one could meet. Talk about a man giving of his time as well as his money. He always spoke about the importance of shopping and supporting your local businesses and charity. It became part of the culture of the Oasis. We donated to almost every cause that came through the door, supported and sponsored the arts groups, Northumberland Players, the Victorian Operatic Society, the Oriana Singers, most of the high school plays and concerts, as well as being the premier venue for live music in town featuring great live music for all 23 years we owned the restaurant. I got involved and joined the boards of the DBIA with Ross Quigley, the Chamber of Commerce with Carol Farron, Brenda Quinn, and latterly Kevin Ward, during which time I was the Master of Ceremonies for five Business Achievement Award evenings. As an aside here, the Oasis won the award twice, something I was very proud of. I was also involved with the Group for the Beautification of Coburg and worked on a team trying to find donors for the fundraising campaign for the CCC. I worked with the group during the survey phase, researching other communities' revitalization successes relating to the putting together of the recent vitalization initiative with Rob Day, Kevin Narraway, T.J. Flynn, and Bill Patchett. I decided to canvass the local merchants to try to encourage and initiate op an open Sunday policy for a trial period during the summer months from May 24th to Labor Day opening limited hours, 12 to 4 for instance. I understand the hours the shop owners put in are sometimes onerous and affording uh, additional staff is not always possible. However, I feel strongly that there should be an open Sunday policy in downtown Coburg for visitors to the town. Most recently, I have joined the group managed by Rob Day at the Business Advi Advisory Center as an advisor. I was asked to become a member of the Rotary Club of Coburg and have been a proud member for 20 years. I have served on many committees as well as chairing a few and was a director for two years. I am going back on the board as vice president this coming July. It's a great honor to be a member of such an active club. As a business, we were involved financially assisting the purchase of the Chateau property to square off Victoria Park. We made a significant donation to the new hospital, donated food services to the hospital gala and contributed to the Salvation Army soup kitchen for all 23 years. 
We also got very involved with Antonio Sarmiento in his effort to breathe new life into the Park Theatre, offering assistance with securing their liquor license, donating furniture and cash, as well as working in the ticket office, unfortunately to no avail at that time. Although I have not had any direct municipal political experience, while in business we kept very well informed as to the activities at Council. We understood that as you succeeded, the town and us as a business would also succeed. I did have, however, some uh, opportunities to visit Council over the years, as you would expect, and felt no matter what the issue or how contentious, I was dealt with fairness. It was dealt with fairness, honesty, and very thoughtfully. The town seems to be heading in a positive direction as the vitalization initiative rolls out. Culturally, it's nice to see renovations at the Sifton Cook Center and the Marie Dressler Museums. The empty storefronts have always been an issue and something that I was asked about quite often at the restaurant by visitors to Coburg. I feel it's important that they are kept up and looked lived in. The recent dressing of the windows by the Northumberland Art Gallery contributes to that end, along with the Summer Entrepreneur Program. Support from the Town Council and the vision of the CAO made it possible to showcase the CCC as an event site for some large concerts, as well as their ongoing hockey program. The concerts were well received and appreciated by the community, and now we have three large tournaments coming in this spring, which can only be good for Coburg. Coburg's greatest asset, and I would suggest its brand, is our beautiful waterfront and harbour. It's very important we take care to preserve it. When people asked us if we were going to stay in Coburg once I retired, I was very surprised. I can't imagine living anywhere else. Whether it is at a, as a businessman or I imagine as a public servant, I think it's important to be honest and open-minded, keeping your own opinions close to your chest, and that you have big ears and a good sense of humor and apparently thick skin. I know I offer a varied set of skills from my community service, volunteer experience, creativity, and being a business and property owner for 20 plus years in Coburg that I would be an asset to this council. Going back to my previous comment about the value of time, I now have it and I thank you for yours. Thank you, Don. The next candidate is Mark Burgess. Okay, Mark, please step forward. Your Worship, councillors and guests, to quote Nathan Hale, I wish to be useful. Every kind of service done in the public good is necessary, and necessary means honourable. And in that light, I commend you for the work that you do for the town, and I commend the applicants for being here today. I'm a graduate of the University of Ottawa, um, and I fell into, by happenstance of finishing with an English degree, I fell into a career of advertising and marketing. I was working with a large number of firms from around the world, and most importantly, and I think germane to uh, discussion today, I was lucky enough to have the government of Ontario as a client for three years, and I served the Ministry of Citizenship and the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care. In the Ministry of Citizenship, I had as clients uh, the Accessibility Directorate, the Senior Secretariat, uh, Violence Against Women, and, without referring to my notes, Homelessness, that's right, yeah. Um, it gave me a profound insight into the workings of municipalities, particularly in Toronto, but I think it was applicable across the, across the province. For the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care, my principal client was Trillium Gift of Life, uh, organ and tissue donation, something in which I am uh, fervently interested. I was long interested in federal politics, and in fact, over the last federal campaign, I, s I served in a very minor way, but it became apparent to me fairly quickly that if I was to have any meaningful contribution, it would be on a municipal level. And in fact, I've already asked to, to volunteer and have been accepted on the Accessibility Advisory Committee which, if I'm successful this evening, I would ask Councillor McCarthy if she would consider at least having me on in a, in a volunteer capacity. It's a very, very important thing to me. My goal in being on the Council in the first couple of months is to work collaborative, collaboratively and primarily to listen. 
Um, I don't come with preconceived ideas. I come with an open mind and ability to analyze and seek solution. To the council, I bring my experience in uh, business, in marketing, and fundraising, and my experience working on several boards, not the least of which was as a governor at Loyalist College. To these, I brought the ability to, to listen, to participate, and to help. I note that the vacant councillor position from uh, Councillor Sherwin is to sit on the fire and police advisory committees, and to that, I bring at least a modicum of experience, having worked on an ambulance for five years in Campbellford, and I perhaps have some insight and some extra empathy for the services. I grew up in Campbellford. Coming to Coburg to play football and basketball against Coburg West and Coburg East was, was an impressive experience. And to this day, Coburg as our, our home remains an impressive community. I've been brief, that's all I have to say, and I thank you for your time. Hi, thank you, uh, Mark. Your Worship, the next candidate is Marcy Whalen. Welcome, Marcy. Thank you, Mayor Brockenier, members of the council. Thank you, Mayor Brockenier, members of the council, other nominees in the gallery, for giving me this time to represent myself. My name is Marcia Whalen, and I'm proud to say I'm a lifelong resident of the town of Coburg, and I have decided to step forward and offer my skills and expertise as to serve as a member of the Coburg Town Council. My background in business started in 1988 when I became a real estate agent when I worked for Ken Hawk in real estate for 12 years. This profession gave me the exposure to dealing with zoning, bylaws, and potable water issues, but it also gave me um, the chance to work with many customers. And one I might say is uh, one of the most rewarding parts of my career, and it's been mentioned here this evening, is, was working with out of town customers who were choosing possibly Coburg to be their, their, their new residence. When I'd start to work with those customers, I would first sell them Coburg and then I would find them a home. Selling Coburg was the easiest job because being in a hometown girl, I was so proud of it. I'd sell Coburg and, and then it was, it was such an honor when they would um, make sure that they chose our, our community and it was, it was such a privilege and, and a compliment that they chose us. After my real estate career, I entered the real estate, uh, the retail sector, where I've worked for the past 17 years for Reno Ferrari. Ten years ago, my employer asked me to um, develop a specialty store, which is the Bra Boutique. We have two locations, one in Peterborough and one at 12 King Street West here in Coburg. I manage both properties, or both stores, and in doing so, I deal with my yearly budgets, do all the purchasing, hiring, training a staff as it is specialized, and most of all, promoting our business. One of the most um, satisfactory things is to deal with my customers with most ut utmost respect and send them out the door feeling so much better about themselves. Unfortunately, to date, I have not had the privilege to volunteer for any boards or committees for the town of Coburg, but I have given back to my community Giving, by being the president of the Golden Plow Lodge Auxiliary. I'm past president of the Coburg Community Hockey League Ladies Auxiliary. And I currently, for the last two years, am on the special events um, committee for the DBIA. Each role has allowed me to work with others to achieve our goals for the benefit of each, each organization. There are several areas of the town council that are of interest to me the safety of our community and police services being one. With having our oldest son and daughter-in-law, each police officers, our son in Durham region and our daughter-in-law, um, Northumberland OPP, um, this, this area is of much interest to me and I feel that I would understand most of the issues that this board would deal with. Secondly, I feel the town has done a fabulous job with our community center. 
So many positives here with the seniors programs at such an affordable rate. Hosting the major sporting events and concerts has been very positive. I do hope the town will move forward in the addition of a pool and with, along with that would have to be improved parking there. Um, myself, um, being a swimmer and enjoying my aquafit, using the uh, YMCA pool is excellent, but I do feel now we are in need of that secondary pool. Lastly, with working in our downtown for the past two years, I have had many ideas that in my opinion would improve traffic and possibly increase business. I would love to see free Wi-Fi in the downtown business core with a possible app for the town of Coburg to be developed. Maybe this is in the works that I'm not aware of, but I think, it, I think the technology would be a real plus. Offering um, features like this, I feel, would bring more people to the downtown and to our waterfront and possibly encourage new entrepreneurs to open their businesses here to, and fill up some of our empty storefronts. My vision is to see the downtown as vibrant as it was in the past. With the downtown revi revitalization plan, I feel we are here and we are headed in the right direction. I know I could be instrumental in helping Coburg prosper and grow as a safe and progressive community, community that we are all so proud to call home. That is why I'm asking you to vote for me to fill your vacancy to town council. I would like to thank you in advance and I have been honored to be part of this electoral process. Okay, thank you, Marcia. Your Worship, the next candidate is Randy Curtis. Hey, welcome, Randy. Thank you. We'll just do a little sound check here. Everything. Thank you. And, uh, Mr. Larmer will give you the signal in just a minute. Congratulations to the council for their brave and courageous uh, pioneering of a new system for nominating the vacant uh, council position. I, th I think this is a, uh, a first as I understand it, and I think you're very brave to do so. Um, I was born in Coburg and have extensive roots in the community. Six generations ago, my uh, ancestors settled on the south shore of uh, Rice Lake at Curtis Point took three generations to get down to Coburg, but uh, my grandfather settled here, Otto Curtis. And he did serve as a counselor on this council in the 1950s. I attended public and secondary school here in Coburg, and upon graduation, went to Toronto to attend and graduated from Ryerson. I grew up playing on the West Beach and at a harbor when it was uh, only an oil and coal ships and occasional wire ship would come in from Germany and the yacht club was uh, consisted of a few dinghies and a, and a white uh, white check. Look around and see how far this community has come. The oil tanks of coal yards are now luxury condos and the harbor is filled in the season with recreational boats all season long. I have no political experience. I belong to no political associations. I have on two occasions registered with two different parties at uh, different periods of time to assist acquaintances to represent themselves with respective parties in this writing. I, I do believe I have developed through my business career transferable skills to the position of counselor. I spent the first 17 years of my working career with Energizer Battery Company. I started as a sales engineer and progressed to vice president of sales and marketing in Canada in a 12 year period. I then finished out my tenure as managing director of Energizer Mexico for the last five years and I returned to Coburg with my young family because I wanted them to grow up in a safe and friendly community as I did. 
The skills I have developed include strategic planning and development, as well as execution, and I would suggest to you that the execution is the harder part of the two. Leadership and people development, operations, experience, excellence, financial analytics. Generally, I understand how a business should operate. I believe the town of Coburg has 19,000 customers that require services delivered to them in an efficient manner in order to provide a safe and healthy community. And this is directed by the mayor and the council. My core beliefs are that continuous improvement in operations is not only achievable, but necessary in today's environment and is applicable to both public and commercial entities. That capital spending be tied to a financial return other than in the case of safety to the community or safety to the employees of the town. That consensus can be built through effective persuasion rather than divisiveness. That effective communication that is open and honest creates an environment of trust with all the stakeholders. I understand the time and work commitment that's required for this position. I do have experience with volunteer boards having served on the board of Dalewood for six years, the last two years as president, and I would hope that you would consider me for this position. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Your Worship, the next candidate is Bruce Moore. Okay, please step forward, Bruce. Hello, Mr. Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Councillors. My name is Bruce Moore, and I am vying for the vacant council position. First of all, I would like to thank former Councillor Sherwin for his years of service on council and the great work he has done for the town of Coburg. About me, I was born in Port Hope and grew up in Garden Hill for 14 years and Castleton for my teen years. While living in Garden Hill, my father, Thomas Moore, helped bring the Hope Township Fire Station Number 2 to the community. He was the first fire chief of that station. In my mid-twenties, I moved into Coburg and have been here since. So I've lived in and around Coburg my whole life. I think this is very important that a councillor be someone that lived many years around the town. Therefore, I have seen what has come and what has gone, what has worked and what not worked as well. I was involved in scouting and a youth as a youth and achieved the highest award possible, the Chief Scout Award. I was also one of the first members of the first St. Peter's Ventures and Rovers here in town. I have done some charitable work through town in my scouting years and have also participated in the United Way Day of Caring for four years recently. I have also worked locally and believe in building more great jobs in this town in the future so more people's children can stay in the town they grew up in instead of moving away or commuting for better jobs. I strongly believe in our downtown and that the downtown or the town and DBIA work together in making downtown great again by multi-advertising to entice new business to come to our great town. We have so much potential and just need to work harder to bring that business here. Also, possibly better hours of operation from our existing merchants. I have seen some tourists come to our great beach on a Sunday and wander downtown and look into the windows of the closed businesses. Imagine if they were open, how much more sales that would generate from the tourists and the local community. Many people that live and work in town have told me they would shop more downtown, but with the hours they work, most shops are closed by the time they come home. I am also very here today to resent, represent people of my generation and younger, with no show of disrespect, feel themselves and their views are not being well represented. I want to show them that the town is here for them as well. We have to take into consideration that we have a great tourist attraction with the beach, but we also have to show the people of Coburg we are doing more for them and not just the tourists. We should make some benefits for the people of Coburg. One example is a lot of people in town won't go to the beach because of paid parking. 
They feel they pay property taxes. Why should they pay more and the same as tourists? So why? So what we could do as a town is for our great community is to give each homeowner one parking pass per year that could be used at the parking lots at the beach. I care for this town deeply and I want to prove it by working for the people to make our town a better place. I want to have open conversation with the public and listen to their ideas and how they think this town can improve. Community interaction is very important and I want them to feel like they are making things better as well no matter their age. Either 10 or 110. They all deserve to be heard. It is everyone's town, Let have, let's have them feel that town pride once again. I would like to thank you for your time and also your great service you all do for the town of Colbert. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Your Worship, the next candidate is Gudrun Ludorf Weaver. Okay, Gudrun, please step forward. Good afternoon, Your Worship, Council members and municipal staff. My name is Gudrun Ludorf Weaver and I have a story. It's a love story, but not what you might think. It's about a love for a town, this town, and its people that started even before I moved here in 2005. I was on my way to Kingston just after 9-11 to reunite with my sister-in-law and my brother, who had just finished his last tour of duty with NATO in Europe. And I'd never seen any of this beautiful part of Ontario when I made a stop here. I was smitten, not just by the charm and beauty, but by the character and history so obviously cherished. To be smiled at and greeted by people I had never met made me realize that this is exactly what I was looking for even without knowing it. After I moved here, I wanted to be part of the community, so I got involved with several town committees, like the Canada Day Committee, where I helped to organize a display of students' art depicting what Canada Day meant to them. I had been in education for 45 years, so thought I knew a thing or two. The parents loved it, so did the grandparents and aunts and uncles, and of course the kids. It was a pleasure working with Lara Scott who exemplified the commitment to excellence of town staff. That was fun. So next I joined the Coburg Coburg Twinning Committee. Since German is my first language, I now chair that committee. We've welcomed exchange students and carried on with previous Mayor Joan Chalovich's inspired vision of connecting our own, our namesake, to Germany, except for the O. When Habitat for Humanity was looking for a facilitator to help the transition to self-sufficiency for their new families, I was able to be part of the facilitation team as well as help to install the siding on a new residence. It was eminently satisfying to know that we had helped these families help themselves out of poverty, with their sweat equity, and into their own home. I met the most interesting and articulate people in this town. One of them asked if I'd like to join the Environmental Advisory Committee, which I did, and was proud to receive the town's recognition for the work I did with that very energetic committee. Out of that committee came Coburg's 2009 Climate Action Plan which will, I hope, provide a basis for the town's 2018 strategic action plan to ensure that it is adequately prepared for climate change as mandated by our provincial government. In the meantime, I helped create a number of organizations which worked with town councils under both our previous mayor, Peter Delante, 
as well as Mayor Brockemir and staff to shine a light on ways of realizing how to support active transportation, such as the Bicycle Action Committee of Sustainable Coburg, for which I was honored to receive the town's civic award. Another deep interest I shared with other members of the community as well as Mayor Brockenier was the future of the tannery site. I and others have made presentations to council to demonstrate how this area could serve as a model for a sustainable community. Drawing on examples from Drake's Landing in Okotoks, Alberta, as well as other sustainable developments worldwide. This deep interest inspired me not only to go to Drake's Landing and speak with the sustainability officer there, who happened to originate from Coburg, but also to attend the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Conference in Prince Edward Island in 2014. I explained to the mayor before I left that my purpose was to be of assistance to the town's deliberations about the tannery site and promised to share any information about brownfield remediation that might be helpful. My bathroom renovation budget had been blown that year. And then there were the 2014 municipal elections. I ran. My supporters convinced me that there were those who wanted to see the principles of sustainability represented. And over 1,500 voters agreed, but I did not win a seat. It was, however, a valuable experience for my growth in understanding municipal affairs. Undaunted, I persisted, continuing to work with several organizations in areas like Growing the Green Belt into Northumberland, which was a provincial initiative that was in the process of reviewing the extent to which the Green Belt should expand and where. I was invited to attend a roundtable discussion on this topic in July of 2016, along with various other stakeholders in order to help the provincial government make an informed decision. The results, just recently released, have been very gratifying. Urban sprawl has been kept at bay in addition, I was asked to sit on the town's newly created Planning and Sustainability Advisory Committee. The chair, realizing that there was a learning curve for understanding the added dimension of sustainability, asked if I could help out. I, with the help of my team at Sustainable Coburg, developed a workshop, Sustainability 101, which was the kickoff for a series of lunch and learn sessions last May to help educate council, staff, and volunteers. It was great fun for me to see a number of aha moments in the participants. It was really rewarding to be of assistance. So what do I have to offer council? They are in fact the very things that have shaped me because I love this town and its people. Commitment, persistence, vision, inclusiveness, knowledge, humility, and collaboration. As well, I can offer strengths and skills that have proven valuable as a school administrator, teacher, consultant, writer and editor, and president of a not-for-profit community organization, such as developing budgets, creating assessment strategies, producing accountability pathways, communication skills, facilitating planning and implementation, and team building. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Gudra. Your Worship, the next candidate is Carla Grusella. Welcome, Carla. Thank you. 
I'm ready. Hello, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Deputy Mayor, Councillor, is everyone here? And my friends and all our other friends out online out there. My name is Carla Grusella. My presentation today is going to be in four parts. Um, first, I wanted to just tell you a little personal information, why you should select me as your next counselor, how I will come up to speed, and then a summary for you. So as far as personal is concerned, my husband and I moved to Coburg in 2010, so we mark seven years here this June. Mine is a small family. My husband and I have no children. My mom lives at Coburg, at, here in Coburg at Legion Village, and my brother-in-law and sister-in-law live in Coburg as well. So the whole family is here. We're not going anywhere. I'm a board member of the Coburg District and Historical Society as well. I've been a part of this group for five years. I love this group and I love and have learned a lot of history about our town. I would like to encourage everyone to come join us at a meeting by the way. So why me? Well my 25 year career has been spent as a sales and marketing professional. I've been a sales manager, a service manager, a trainer, and all in the software and big data technology industries. I have worked with both small businesses and very large businesses, uh, one of them that you might recognize, the multinational Nielsen Marketing Research. My background is quite different than most of you here on Council, and if you're open to the challenge of working with someone like me that's new, then let me bring a fresh perspective and a focus to council. As potential counselors, it was recommended we review the role and responsibilities by taking an online course at the Association of Mis Municipalities of Ontario, and I've done this. I'm the perfect example of a Coburger who wants to live in a fun and vital town, mindful of taxpayer dollars, they're also mine, but also in balance with wanting to live in a place that has future potential for all generations. So how will I do this? I believe that no matter how much experience you have, uh, no one person can do an, an effective job. As a new counselor, I will draw upon the abundance of knowledge and resources that exists right here. From all of you here in council, from the many, many volunteers that work in various committees, of course, our own town employees, face-to-face -face with Coburg citizens, through blogs and social media, service clubs, and the minutes from previous council meetings that are all available to everyone to read. I'm very respectful of everyone's views. This is especially important with people who have opposing ideas <coughs> or positions. This job requires we be effective listeners and questioners in order to understand all opinions before making decisions. I will thoroughly question and investigate all issues. When difficult or perhaps unpopular decisions are made, believe me, I can take the heat. And yes, I am thick-skinned. You see, as a sales career, in a sales career, one thing, pardon me, you see, a sales career does teach you that 90% of the time, criticism is aimed at the decision, not the person. So in summary, what can I do for you? Well, as a retiree, I can and will devote the majority of my time to council work. I'm a free agent. I have no prior business or personal connections with anyone here at council that might conflict with work to be done. You can count on me. I will meet all the commitments as I take this position very seriously. I believe my fellow Historical Society board members would confirm that. I would like the honor of working with all of you here and to speaking with all the interested Coburgers whose opinions they would like to share with me and in turn, I would share with you. So thank you very much for your time and I do hope for your vote. Well, thank you, Carla. You're welcome. If my count is correct, Mr. Davey, uh, there are not any more names in the box. <laughs> the next... Uh, your Worship, you're correct, that uh, concludes the list of speakers. So the next uh, point of order would be to uh, proceed with the vote. Uh, as a reminder, I will read out uh, the list of candidates in alphabetical order, not the speaking order, but in alphabetical order, the way they appeared on the certified list of candidates. We have five members of council that are voting 
Uh, I will record the votes uh, after each uh, candidate is named. And I would ask that each councillor raise their hand uh, very clearly so there's no doubt as to whether they're voting or not. Thank you, Your Worship. Again, going in alphabetical order, the first name on the list is Mark Burgess. Next would be Randy Curtis. Carla Grusella. Dean Jenkins. Brian Lambert. Gudrun Ludorf Weaver. Bruce Moore. Donald Owen. Charles Simut. Suzanne Sagan. Marcia Whalen. Your Worship, by way of the, re the vote, there's four votes for Suzanne Sagan, and that would be a majority of the council. Okay. Uh, we, will, we will now have a, a motion to appoint <coughs> Suzanne Sagan. To the as a councillor for the Corporation of Town of Coburg. Yes, and uh, the Deputy Mayor will, will put that motion forward and um, the process, uh, after, I'll wait until the, uh, until it's been approved and I will describe the process. Deputy Mayor Henderson. Your Worship, members of uh, the press and the audience, and those candidates who submit it. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor McCarthy. Whereas the special council has considered a motion to appoint one councillor for the corporation of the town of Coburg. Now, therefore, it be it resolved that council appoint Suzanne Siguen as a councillor for the corporation of the town of Coburg to fill the existing vacancy, effect of January 30th, 2017. And upon the member taking the former formal oath of office and assuming their council seat at the regular council meeting to be held on that date. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion? And it's uh, carried, it's unanimous. So um, I would ask, that, so the process, Suzanne, I would ask that you come back to uh, council next Monday night uh, for prepared for seven o'clock and we will have the swearing in ceremony so that you can be an official member of council and take part in the council meeting next week. Okay. Yeah. And I now call for adjournment. To the meeting. Motion to adjourn, Councilor McCarthy.